Take it evil. We got this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. I risked my life. I put my family in danger. If I was caught, they would have put a bullet in my head. But it was the right thing to do. It was the only thing to do. Terror plot well in Garden City, Kansas. That would have been one of the most deadly acts of domestic terrorism ever in the United States. It would have been Oklahoma City. He put his family himself in jeopardy for us. Twenty-four hours. Assault on the Capitol. The ABC News original, exclusively on Hulu. Now streaming. Finally tonight, the heartfelt reunion between a hero neighbor, first responders, and the child they rescued. We first showed you these dramatic moments earlier this week. Body camera video from first responders performing CPR on a six-year-old girl. I just kind of put some shoes on and ran out. And the hero neighbor, Dusty Talavera, who jumped into a frozen pond to pull that girl and two others to safety after they fell through the ice. The six-year-old rushed to the hospital in serious condition. But just two days later, Zakaya Williams was back home in the arms of her grateful parents. And they saved my baby, and I just want to tell them I really want to thank them for saving her. It was like a puzzle. Every piece had to go together for it to work. And the puzzle got put together so fast, it saved my daughter's life. Then, this emotional reunion with that neighbor and those first responders. Hi, baby. Hi. Well, we're so glad you're okay. When I seen them on the video, you could see the passion and emotion in them by what they were saying. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yes, come on, sweetheart. Come on. Like they were talking to their own children. I'm so glad it's just here. The rescuers greeting Zakaya with big hugs. A lot of quick reaction from everybody's part. It boggled my mind. Recognition for extraordinary acts of courage. Thank you, everybody, saving me. It is a happy ending. It's a very happy ending. It doesn't always work out that way, and I'm so glad it did. We're glad, too, stepping up in a big way. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Wade Johnson in New York. I'll see you on GMA in the morning. Lindsay Davis will be right back here tomorrow night. Have a great night. It was an extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do they catch her for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcasts. It was a scary time in the 70s. You had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it. Serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. We got this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions. Straightforward reporting. No spin, no hype, no bull. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. ABC News, America's number one news source. understand what happens January 6th, you really have to rewind the clock to really look at where that anti-government movement started from. We came from a, an era of Ruby Ridge, Waco, Bundy Ranch. Federal agents clashing with protesters, some from armed militia groups. This constant drumbeat of the federal government taking away their rights. Trump's presidency legitimized the fringe ideas, and it says it's OK. You have Trump encouraging these agitators. Let me tell you, this election was rigged. Be there on January 6th. That is an invitation. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. It's easy to miss the slow boil. And, and in a lot of ways, the militia movement is arguably the slow boil. If you have millions of people willing to believe lies, is it any surprise that you could have a January 6th? Jason Van Tatenhoff. I'm a classically trained painter. At one point in time, about 15, 16 years ago, I was considered one of the top rising artists of the Denver art scene. My day consists of, you know, waking up, taking in the news, and writing all day. Hey guys, Jason Van Tatum of Oath Keepers here. I did it with the Oath Keepers, but I was doing it before then, and you know, something I've always done. Uh, I have an important story that we need to get out there. Get back now! Many of you, like me, were very inspired by the actions that happened at Bundy Ranch. It was the first time in our country's recent history that good Americans stood up and said, you know what? We're not gonna let this happen on our watch.
We went, we stood shoulder to shoulder with some of the best Americans in this country. Remember the video? Yeah, I do. I, I just got to own it. You know what? I, I was swept up. I was excited. And I was wrong. And I do. I feel awful about it. I think I needed a, a wider pulled out view to kind of understand things better. The Oath Keepers are a potentially violent extremist group. Stuart Rhodes uh, founded the Oath Keepers in 2009. My handguns here. I've got at least two spare magazines on this side. The Oath Keepers have an active online presence, and they're constantly recruiting people from military and law enforcement with their videos. The Oath Keepers aren't just made up of people at the fringes. They're actually veterans, police officers, people who work in these institutions that actually define American political structure. Their entire reason for being is to train together to be prepared to defend their territory or defend their state. To the rewind the clock, a key part of this constant drumbeat of the federal government was basically taking away their rights and that they should be prepared one day to have to stand up and maybe even take physical action it was in 2014 in a remote part of Nevada, the Bundy Ranch. A dramatic standoff caught on tape tonight. Federal Rangers up against a rancher. Ammon Bundy and his father Cliven were grazing cattle on federal land and refused to pay grazing fees to the government, the Bureau of Land Management, that by all accounts were legal. I have no contract with the United States government. I paid grazing fees for management. That's what BLM was supposed to be. And they were managing my ranch out of business. The Bundy family is convinced that the federal government has been overstepping their bounds for years. And it ended up being a confrontation with the federal government. There was a message that was sent out by the Bundys, called for armed militia to come. The range war begins tomorrow at the Bundy Ranch at 9.30 a.m. A real Wild West showdown. Federal agents clashing with protesters, some from armed militia groups. So when the call comes out, it makes perfect sense that the Oath Keepers would ride in to the rescue. In essence, they are the cavalry. There was that big arm standoff, you know, those iconic images of the bridge and the BLM agents down in the uh, corral. Their guns pointed across the way at each other. It seemed like a very historic moment to me, and I wanted to go find out what was really happening, kind of boots on the ground. This video went viral. The video shows the government clashing with protesters and even shows Ammon Bundy being tased. And in response, the Oath Keepers and other militia groups descended on Bunker Bar. This confrontation is the first time really that you see militias from around the country actually come in an operational uh, role to confront the federal government. Law enforcement or the Bureau of Land Management, the folks that were trying to end things peaceably, they realized they were outgunned. Late today, the government released Rancher Bundy's cattle, packed up and left to cheers and cheers. A tense situation diffused for now. They do what is necessary in order for there not to be the kind of bloodshed that we see in a Waco or Ruby Ridge. But in doing so, it ends up giving the appearance that a group of militiamen had beaten the federal government. Stuart Rhodes and Ammon Bundy, they broadcast that victory online for the whole world to see. What happened today was a choice between bending the knee and standing up. And you folks stood up. Yeah. 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 The battle has been won, but the war is won. The American dream is dead. The newest candidate for president, billionaire Donald Trump. About a year after the Bundy Ranch standoff, Donald Trump comes on the political scene. He rides down the golden escalator at Trump Towers and tells us things that just seem unthinkable. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. Knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. We are going to drain the swamp in Washington. Trump's candidacy really spoke to the militia movement and the anti-government movement. Our purpose is to restore and defend the Constitution. Now, Eamon Bundy's a hero and he would be the one that would lead in effort to push back against any federal control to say, well, I too have resisted the federal government, and you can do it too. Tonight, armed protesters have taken over a federal wildlife refuge, determined to stay as long as it takes, die, and prepare to use violence. Well, the Malheur Wildlife Refuge takeover was really Ammon Bundy's own operation. We, you. we support you! It began with a peaceful march, protesting land rights and the sentencing of two local ranchers convicted of burning federal land. It was based on the fact that he was upset that a father and son were being sent back to prison for arsons on federal land that they had admitted to, and they didn't want Ammon's help. The Hammonds have turned themselves in. But Ammon was convinced that them going back to prison was federal overreach. It is the duty of the people to put that government back in its place. And so he went to the refuge and took it over to protest them being sent back to prison. They tested the waters with Bunny Ranch, and they succeeded, and then they went and took it further, took over government property. It had a major, major effect on day-to-day -day life there. So that is the refuge headquarters. You can see the beautiful tile rests on, on the buildings. It became a, a real problem for the community. I started pulling together community meetings. About four or 500 people met in the high school auditorium. And a group of people came in, about 40 or 50 people. And it just took my breath away as I watched them because I realized they were all going to the top of the bleachers and they had fully circled the entire high school auditorium. And then I realized Ammon Bundy's one of them. Tonight, militia leader Ammon Bundy showed up uninvited to a community meeting in Burns and got shouted down. Mr. Bundy, be very clear. I'm happy to meet you. 
any place outside my county. It is time for you to go home. These people can kill me. Rising tensions in the armed standoff in Oregon that is showing no signs of ending. We have no intent of pointing a gun at anybody, but let's be clear here. Who's pointing guns at me? Who's pointing guns at Ammon? Hey guys, this is Jason Pantano with Post Keepers Media. I'm here at the Mallard Refuge with my friend LaVoy Jenkins. Now, it's not like we were great friends or anything, but we had conversations and, you know, interviews and stuff, and, and I actually, you know, tried to talk uh, LaVoy out of Mallard uh, the day before. I was one of the last calls made to him, I'm trying to plead with him, saying, look, this is, this is not going to go well. It's not going to end well. But he had already made his decision. He was he was ready to stand and die there. I'm not going to jail. Would I sit out here with this my little old rifle? Lavoy Finnegan was the spokesperson through most of the event at, at Mount here. It's not a line in the sand. A line in the snow. The guy that got sucked into Bundy's strange view of the U.S. Constitution. The people have to take possession, and then the law will follow. Wrote a book where he uh, he kind of hoped to die as a martyr. Ammon Bundy, his brother, and Lavoy Finnegan decide they need to go visit the county sheriff. They came upon a checkpoint uh, orchestrated by the Oregon State Police and FBI. And then Finnegan took off. He went around the vehicle and hit that deep snow. And... Law enforcement believed that he had a firearm and, and he was shot. Anytime there's anyone killed who's part of the, the movement, that person becomes a hero. Do I think that Finnegan is a rallying cry? Yeah, I think, I think it is. Group leader Ammon Bundy and his brother were arrested in the shootout and could be seen handcuffed on the road. They were acquitted. They were found not guilty. Federal authorities also had filed charges against Ammon Bundy for the 2014 standoff in Nevada, and that case ended up getting thrown out. So no charges stuck to Ammon Bundy. This is what you get when government officials ignore the people. The political elites in this country have used their power to enrich themselves at your expense. Trump's candidacy and his presidency legitimized the Frankenstein monster. It takes all of these fringe ideas, and it says once they rise to the mainstream, it's OK. <laughs> People were becoming more and more radicalized. And that kind of, to me, was absolutely the last straw. I had to just turn and walk away. It's actually kind of laughable in hindsight to go back and say that there weren't any warning signs. It wasn't just warning signs or red flags. It was a neon billboard. It's just a progression. You start at a ranch, you go to a, a government facility, and then you're at the Capitol. I mean, it, it is a progression. There's a straight line that you can draw from these standoff events to January 6th. <laughs> If you have millions of people willing to believe lies, is it any surprise that you could have a January 6th? It was an extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do they capture for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcast. World News Now. And America This Morning. The best new video. Breaking news overnight. Your money and concerns about inflation. The pandemic is not over. The stories people are talking about. You want to shake your legs? Don't. I was say. And what to expect in the day ahead? From the top of the world. ABC World News Now and America This Morning. Weekday morning starting at 2 a.m. Eastern. Up all night to keep you up to date. The world really is turning upside down now. It seems to get worse every week in one way or another. <laughs> you know, Trump, Trump was an unknown, at least to me. He resounded, you know, very well with the, 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 the patriot community. Trump did so many outrageous and inflammatory and controversial things as a candidate. There was a sense, though, that once he was elected president, once he was sworn in, that the trappings of power uh, would have a moderating influence on him. Congratulations, Mr. President. Yeah. But that was blown apart on day one, just after he takes the oath of office. This American carnage stops right here and stops right now. Donald Trump doesn't moderate once he becomes president. He is every bit as abrasive, as extreme in his views, as willing to offend absolutely everybody. He is playing to the fringes of, of American politics as president of the United States. At Charlottesville was a turning point in our country. Ah, replace us! You will not replace us! You... And then, of course, when the president afterwards said, Very fine people on both sides. That was just like, bing, bing, bing. We, it, this, is, this is cool for us to do. That the violence was acceptable, and it didn't stop there. I said, please don't be too nice. These are people. These are animals. Definitely in the years between 2017 and January 6, 2021, we've seen just a continued escalation of online, uh, you know, anti-government, white supremacist, anti-other extremism. These organizations at the fringe right of America can say, 
we have a president who understands us. We have a president who believes in us, and we have a president who condones our actions. There are cases around the country, cases involving threats, attacks. Get off my back of my head, bro. That's it. This is for Trump. Where Trump's name is invoked by the person who's committing an attack. I think I said, you know what? Please get out of my country, because I don't like him. And this is why I like Trump. And he's doing the same thing as I feel. Wants him out of our country. I found not a single case like that, not one case for President Obama or for President George Bush. The whole Trump era is this fascinating study of people feeling like somebody's standing up for them and empowering them to like speak their minds. And then at the start of 2020, you have this incredible merging of all of these dark forces. It was basically a cauldron and the fuel on the fire was the COVID pandemic. You have lockdowns and masking, and that gives fresh fuel to the Proud Boys, to QAnon, to the Oath Keepers. They latched right onto that, and they started just pumping it, you know? And that's part of the gig, is they, they look for these, these hot button topics. I, I remember the day that the CDC uh, put out the mask recommendations. So I just don't want to wear one myself. It's a recommendation, they recommend it. He tweeted in April of 2020, liberate Michigan, liberate Virginia. He encouraged armed militia groups protesting in their state capitals. Look at the, the organization that Ann and Bunny's been putting together in Idaho and how, how much of a cornerstone the, the anti-mask movement and the, the showdowns at the, the local government. If we have to knock down the doors of the Capitol building to enter in to exercise that right, yes. and that's exactly what I will do, and I hope any of you will be here. Yeah. This is crazy. But it, uh, individuals ultimately see these things as encroaching on their constitutional, God-given rights. It's a ticking time bomb. I've seen people where election got stolen. And by the way, we're not going to let that happen to us. Yeah, it's pretty obvious if Trump does not win that it was rigged. Because we have a rigged election. It's a rigged election. It's the only way we're going to lose. He knew that it was looking bad, and he was laying the groundwork for claiming fraud even before the first ballot was cast. This is stealing millions of votes. There were all these claims about mail fraud. It just didn't exist. It didn't exist before the election. It didn't exist after the election. I think the most dangerous speech that Donald Trump ever gave was the speech that he gave on election night when he came out at 2.30 in the morning. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. <laughs> he claimed a victory when it started to look clear that he was headed towards defeat. My fellow Americans. Biden won by a greater margin than Trump did over Hillary Clinton. Those are facts. Yet you had this very steady drumbeat. It was stolen from me. It was stolen from me. Let me tell you, this election was rigged. That was so great. I thought people would be smart enough to realize, like, look, this guy's just desperate. He just wants to hold on to power. Trump himself was anti-government. These ideologies allowed them to, to coalesce around the person, Trump, who they thought was fighting for them. And his supporters bought into his ideologies and his approach to governing that, you know, exactly what he said, that anything other than a win must be the result of fraud. For nearly a decade, so many people had been told that their government was coming for their rights and that the federal government was basically demolishing this country from the inside and that the day might come where they were going to have to stand up to stop that. Donald Trump says a number of different times, be there on January 6th. And so we might say that that's just rhetoric, that's just Donald Trump talking, but to groups like the Oath Keepers, that is an invitation. That's their moment. It is a call to arms to head to Washington, D.C. on January 6th and prevent the certification of the new president of the United States. We have men already stationed outside D.C. as a nuclear option in case they attempt to remove the president Legally, we will step in and stop it. Rota said that anything that was done on January 6th that was illegal or violent was the result of rogue members who were not acting in concert.